Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready to make the largest purchase I have ever made in my entire life. What could be the largest purchase I ever make in my lifetime. So it's a special day, a big occasion. I wanna look and feel my very best. So I'm going to be doing my makeup while I fill you in on everything that's been going on and give you all of the life updates. I think it will probably explain why I haven't been as active and uploading as regularly as normal because things have been incredibly busy here. The only thing I have on my face right now is moisturizer and I do have a little dryness on my chin. I've been breaking out pretty bad recently so I've been really going hard with all of the tretinoin and active ingredients in the evening. My Dr. Dennis Gross pads. So that has helped the situation. I don't have any active breakouts but now my face is very dry so I'm just going to apply a little bit more of this moisturizer. Just press it into the skin. I like that this stuff is pretty thick supposed to rain all day but we have some bright sun coming in at the moment so my apologies if the lighting changes throughout this video. I'm filming first thing in the morning because we have a busy day today. So today my husband and I are closing on our very first house. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've had to refilm that part of this video because even saying the words out loud it does not feel real. It's been a bit of an arduous process to get to this point so I'm still a little bit in disbelief but it's here. Today is officially closing day. We're both first-time home buyers and we're doing it together which makes it even more special and it's something that we have been thinking about, dreaming about, you know, wishing for and working towards for such a long time that it's kind of crazy that today is the day we are going to be official homeowners. I thought about how I was going to make the announcement and share the news with everybody. So this is a video I've been thinking about for a couple days. I was actually hoping to film it in advance, but it's kind of better that I'm filming on closing day. That way I didn't accidentally jinx myself. But even though I've thought about what to say and I've been reflecting a little bit on the process, I'm still sort of at a loss and starting to feel like a little choked up, a little bit emotional about it, which I didn't expect. So if you've been here a while and you've been following my journey, you probably know that we moved to Miami from Nashville about six years ago. I met my husband when I was working in TV in New Orleans. I was in New Orleans for two years, then we moved to Nashville two years, and then we came down to Miami for my husband's job, and this is the very first place we moved into, this apartment. We have not moved in six years, which might not seem that odd, but for Miami, it's actually pretty rare. I think most of our friends, most of my friends definitely, have moved at least once in the last few years. I think that's pretty common. There are always new buildings popping up, different neighborhoods, but we have been in the same place and we love it. I've always said we have been incredibly spoiled by our location. We never really had a reason to move. And even during the pandemic, we got really lucky because during and after the pandemic, when so many people were moving to Miami, a lot of people from New York came down, from California, very expensive places were moving to Miami. So a lot of the buildings increased their rents double, triple. I know people who had at least a thousand dollars rent increase. I think our rent has gone up maybe a total of $500 over the course of six years which is pretty good for the area. I mean, it's obviously still more expensive than we'd like to pay, but we never felt pressured or felt kind of forced to look for a new place. And I know that happened to a lot of people, so we've been incredibly fortunate. The building has gone through probably 10 management companies. It feels like we have a different management every time I check my email. We have some graduate students, some older folks, retirees. There are some new families here. It's kind of a transitional building. I think we've probably been the longest standing residents here. It's very quiet, it's very safe and walkable, which we like. We've never made friends with any of our neighbors, which is kind of sad, but it's not a super social building, and I think that probably has more to do with our area. It's a bit more residential. It's not really party party like Miami Beach or fast paced like Brickell, downtown, midtown area. It's slow. In those six years we've been here, we have worked our butts off to save money and really prepare ourselves for this moment. And I'm really proud of us because we're doing it 
completely on our own. We've gone through the entire process on our own. It's been a huge learning experience for us both, definitely. It's a major milestone and life-changing event that we've been thinking about for a while. And I know for myself, in the last few years, I've started to get the itch. I felt a little bit constricted living here. As much as I love where we are, I've definitely felt a little bit of FOMO, wanting more space, wanting to just move on to that next level. I felt like maybe a small goldfish in a little bowl where I knew that we were ready. We were mentally ready. We were, were financially ready, emotionally ready. All of the things, I was just ready to take that next step and just progress to the next stage of life. And here we are. I'm 35 years old, turning 36 this year. My husband is 42. And I think it's easy to compare yourself to other people or where you think you should be, where other people think you should be. I'm proud of us that we haven't allowed that to dictate any of our decisions. We never allowed that pressure to make us feel bad or make us feel rushed into something before we were ready. Because now I can say with 100% certainty, we are ready for this day. The process has felt a bit like a sprint and a marathon combined into one because it happened really quickly. It's been a bit of a whirlwind actually. We started looking for houses in April. It was Easter weekend when my parents were in town. We just kind of went out for fun. We drove around to a couple houses. Of course, we've been on Zillow looking at what's available, what's in our area, because we do really like this area. So we went out, we saw a couple things, and we actually met with a realtor the following day, saw a couple houses with her. None of them were quite right, but the following weekend, I went to a showing on my own and I fell in love with this house and I came home and I grabbed my husband, I pulled him out of bed, I said, you have to get up right now because I think I found our house. Within a week of seeing it, we were under contract and we have been going nonstop ever since. It's now the end of May, so early April to end of May, nearly two months of barely being able to catch our breath. Just next step, okay, cross that off the list. Next step, next step, next step. Even though we had been looking casually for a really long time, the actual process of finding the house, deciding that this was the house, going under contract, and then taking all of the proper steps to actually purchase said house was very quick. I don't know when it will sink in, maybe when we spend the first night at the house and we've given our keys to the apartment and we no longer have this place and we are 100% transferred over to the new place. Maybe that's when it will finally hit us that we're moving. I'm going in with the new Chanel Cream Bronzer and I will list all of these products down in the description box. Kind of on a time crunch so I can't really explain all of the products that I'm using but I will list them all in case you're interested. But one of the pieces of advice that our realtor gave us who she has been amazing and I think it was a great piece of advice. She said, don't get hung up on, you know, the square footage, the price, all of the numbers and the details of the house when you're first looking. Go into the house, take it all in, sleep on it, and then the next day you kind of know whether or not a house feels right. You know, can you imagine your life there? Can you actually picture yourself living in this home? What would you and your husband be doing on the weekend? You know, where are you cuddling with the dog in the house? When you fall in love with the house and a couple days go by and you're still thinking about it and you kind of know mentally your heart is telling you this is the one, then you do the number crunching. We had been looking at so many houses online and we saw a lot of houses in person, but we saw so many photos of houses that I think it was just kind of going through my brain subconsciously. And I swear, before I even saw it in person, I woke up one morning during the process and I had been dreaming of our house. And I dreamt that we were in this house that I knew I hadn't toured yet. It was a house that I hadn't seen. I'd seen it somewhere. And it was because my subconscious mind was thinking about the images that I had seen of the house that we ended up purchasing or we're going to purchase today. In my subconscious mind, after just looking at the photos, I think I kind of knew this feels right. You know, something just felt like the, it was the one. We chose the house, but I think the house kind of chose us. And it might seem kind of silly, but it's truly how I feel about it. It just felt 
super comfortable. It feels like a home. We have had the most amazing team working with us. I feel so fortunate, so grateful. Everything has felt like it's come together, even though it was very stressful at the end. I'm not gonna lie, there were some ups and downs, plenty of tears shed over this process. For the most part, everybody has been amazing to work with from our loan officer, insurance agent, the realtor, the seller's realtor, inspector, title company, everybody has been amazing. I know that's not always the case for everybody and the real estate market in general has just been nuts. I'm sure people are watching this and some of you are thinking you're nuts to even try to purchase a house right now. And the Miami market has been even more just cutthroat, absurd, everything is so expensive. It's tough out there. So to go through the process of what's usually a bit stressful, even more so now, and to feel kind of good about it, it's really a credit to the amazing team of people we've had working with us, kind of holding our hand through the process because yeah, we had done a lot of research, but until you go through it, if it's your first time, you just, you can't possibly know what to expect. And we had no idea. So let me tell you about the house. We are officially leaving Miami. And what's funny is that we're only moving maybe four minutes away. <laughs> we got so lucky. We really enjoy our neighborhood. We didn't wanna leave this area, which made finding the right house a little bit trickier, but we are no longer Miami residents. We are Coral Gables residents officially. It's only a four minute drive, but it's a new zip code. And I have to tell you, I'm feeling like a new woman. I don't wanna give too much away because I'm planning to share an empty house tour and probably bombard you with unnecessary house content that nobody asked for. Maybe you're interested in this. Let me know down below if there's anything you'd like to see. I'm obviously going to maintain our privacy, but I have to share because it is incredible. We are not just purchasing a house. We're purchasing an incredible home. I love it so much. I think we both really love the house. Our neighborhood is known for its Spanish architecture. So a lot of the houses are old Florida homes with a huge Spanish influence, a lot of Mediterranean style homes, just beautiful. A lot of the old architects that built in this area were here around the 1940s. So our home is a historic home. It was built in 1940. With that comes all of the issues of an older home. Yes, that's true. But during the life of the home, one of the owners, one of the previous owners was an architect and he did a big expansion. So it's kind of the perfect mix of historic details, beautiful Spanish design with a modern twist. It's somewhere in the middle. One thing I was definitely looking for was charm. To me, that is why you live in this area. You don't want a cookie cutter home. A lot of the new real estate that you see is very modern, very sleek. Everything is white, white tile, white walls. It's a bit like a museum maybe an art museum. And I know so many people love that style. I mean, it's so popular for a reason. A lot of people who move to the area, they want modern design, sleek, clean, all white, everything. I don't think we would have connected on a deeper level to a home like that. It's just not really our style, I don't think. But because we live in Florida and we do have a hurricane season every year, you wanna be careful. You don't want anything that's really old and historic, but kind of crumbling and falling apart. And I don't think that's the case with most of the homes. In fact, a lot of the older homes are built sturdier than ever. Some of the newer homes are a bit cheaper. It feels like we really lucked out in the end with the best of both worlds. I cannot wait to share our new home with you. I'm feeling a little bit anxious about everything that we have to do today first. There are certainly some important steps in between that time. By the time you see this video, it will be over. We will be done. We will have made it to the other side of the process. In the 10 years I've been with my husband, this year will be 10 years in August, so we're almost there. We've moved around quite a bit, and I think it's always been a bit stressful. You know, I've never really looked forward to a move, but this time I'm getting the boxes. I already have the movers set up. I am so ready. It's always good to do a nice purge as well. I've been in spring cleaning mode anyway, so this just gives me another excuse to throw more things away or donate them. We've been taking tons of bags to Goodwill already. 
I think I'm most excited to start decorating. We have a beautiful bathroom upstairs, which I love. So I'll be able to film some great bathroom content, shower, skincare content. I don't think we're gonna put a lot of big projects on our plate right away, but eventually we will be able to start, you know, making it our own, making small changes. I think the first step is to maybe paint a couple rooms, but for the most part, it's move-in ready. And I know my parents are so excited. What's funny is that it's a bit of a full circle moment because, well, they were with us when we first started looking in April, but when my parents left Pittsburgh, after college, they graduated, they left home, they kind of went out on their own, did their own thing. They moved to Miami and they lived in Coral Gables. So they always talk about what it was like when they lived here a long time ago. They love driving past their old apartment, which is still standing and telling us all of the stories, what's changed, what used to be where. And so they are, are so happy for us. They cannot wait to visit. I'm gonna do my best to keep the uploads consistent while we move but I might be away for a couple days, understandably, <laughs> while I pack everything up. It worked out nicely because we will have until the end of the month in the apartment, so there's no rush. It's not like we have to be out in one weekend, but still we have quite a bit of stuff that we're taking with us. And I'm more concerned about the little things. The makeup I think should be pretty easy, but my fragrances, this fragrance ball, that is going to be interesting. I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do it. It really hasn't even sunk in yet. It's hard to believe that this is probably one of my last videos that I'm going to film in this room with this background. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'll really miss about the apartment. As much as I've loved it, I think mentally I've been a bit checked out and ready to go for a while. The convenience of an apartment I will certainly miss. If something breaks or we need a plumber, we just call downstairs and they come up and they fix it right away. When we ran into the washing machine situation, that was really easy to fix. There are a lot of perks and certainly a lot of pros about renting. There is absolutely nothing wrong with renting an apartment. One of my biggest qualms about living here though has been the lighting. The light situation is a bit of a struggle because I have plenty of lights in this room, but I like to shoot with natural daylight. I don't want to shoot with all studio lighting. Not that I think it looks bad, but I don't know if it's always as accurate. I mean, most people don't have studio lighting at home and we certainly don't go through life with all studio lighting. So I like to shoot my makeup with sunlight. We are on the east side of the building, so when the sun comes up, we get great morning sun. Like at 7 a.m., this room is bright, it's beautiful. The crystals hanging from my lamps over here create little rainbows in the room, which is always really nice. I love coming in here in the morning and sitting at the computer, at the vanity behind me, doing some work, drinking my coffee, and then seeing all of the rainbows cascading everywhere and having that delicious morning light. The problem is that by around 11 a.m., there's not very much light in here. It gets pretty dark, and that's the case for basically the entire apartment. I would say by noon, you don't really have any direct light in here, but you still get soft light, of course, because it's daylight outside. But it's just not very bright and light. It's kind of dark and cave-like, which I don't love. I'm actually really curious to see what the light will be like in the new house at different times of day. Because we've spent a lot of time in the house in the morning. When I first viewed the house, it was, I think around 10 a.m. And it was really nice. There was that soft morning light. There are windows everywhere. It's obviously a much larger space. So a decent amount of natural light in the morning but there are a lot of trees around, so you don't get a ton of direct sunlight, which is nice because it keeps the backyard pretty cool. We're gonna have a backyard, oh my gosh. I cannot wait to bring Jazzy and see her reaction the first time she runs free in her new backyard. I mean, you know that funny meme that says, I work hard so my dog can have a better life? That is absolutely true. That's how I feel about Jazzy. This house is gonna be Jazzy's house. We're just going to pay the mortgage. We have a small deck upstairs near the primary bedroom that has really nice afternoon light. 
so I'm hoping that will be a good place to film content, but we'll see. And if anybody has any advice, it will not be unsolicited. I am soliciting from you, please. I love to crowdsource. I like sharing my tips and advice, but I love getting your tips and advice in return. If you have any advice for a first time homeowner, any design advice, any websites that you like to look at, any furniture places that you recommend, feel free to send them my way. I am all ears. I had to do eyeliner off camera. My hands are already shaky because I'm feeling a bit anxious let alone trying to talk through it would have been impossible. I know I have a wide audience and people of all ages, all backgrounds watch my videos. So everybody is in a different place in their life. But if I could offer one piece of advice to anybody who might be feeling the way I was feeling, it's that you should never compare your life with anybody else's. There is no one set plan. You are not ever behind. It's not possible. You can't be behind in life because everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is unique and that's how it should be. And it's a beautiful thing. I know that stress. I know that pressure that exists, unfortunately, but be patient because what's meant for you will never miss you. And things just, they do, they work out the way they're supposed to. Now that doesn't mean you should never take action because your goals and your dreams are not going to present themselves on a silver platter in front of you. You have to make the moves yourself, but don't ever feel pressure to do something that you're not ready to do. Wait until you are ready and you feel 100% confident and then go for it. I firmly believe in pushing ourselves, but only when we're ready and sticking to our timeline, not anybody else's. I was the one who took the reins through this whole process. We had the conversations. Of course, you have to have all of the important, sometimes difficult conversations with your significant other. So when we had talked about it, me and my husband kind of thought, okay, around March of this year, we would start seriously looking. That's what he agreed to, to seriously look. I definitely lit a fire under his butt. I ensured that we were seriously looking and then we seriously made an offer and now here we are. And we're both truly happy. But I kind of knew in my mind that because we are comfortable here, because we like it here, it was going to be up to me. And I think that's pretty common in relationships. You balance each other out. You know, one person is going to lead one person who's more of a go with the flow, more comfortable, and together you just make it work. And that's how it's been with us. The only pushback I've gotten from him so far in this whole process is that I am not allowed to turn it into Barbie's dream house, <laughs> which I keep laughing because I have no desire to turn it into Barbie's dream house. But I think my husband is afraid I'm going to paint the house pink. We are on to the last step and then I am going to have to douse myself with some dry shampoo, throw on clothes, and we have to leave in about mm, 30 minutes, okay. I didn't bother to wash my hair because I thought it was going to be really rainy. So I have an oil slick happening. Something I was laughing about earlier to myself is that this closing day has worked out to be perfect timing because you know if you've purchased a home that you go through a period where, well, it, unless you're paying cash, you can't spend any money. You can't put anything on credit cards. You need to be able to show you have as much money as possible in your accounts. So we have been so afraid to buy anything. But because we have this new home and there are all sorts of Memorial Day weekend sales, I'm thinking, dang, all of these furniture stores are having sales and I'm not going to be able to buy anything. But if we close today, I will still have time to take advantage of some of the sales. It would have been a bummer to miss out on any good discounts because we're gonna need a lot of stuff. I see a lot of Home Depot trips in my near future. Some of it will be pretty boring, but a lot of really fun things too. Of course, it's not going to be all butterflies and rainbows. It comes with a lot of responsibility, a lot of expense. I do feel like I'm finally a grown adult for the first time in my life, which has been kind of funny. but we're excited. I am really looking forward to every challenge, every frustration that comes along with owning a home. I cannot wait. I'm still in that blissful period of sheer naivete where nothing has gone wrong and we can just be happy and excited that it's happening. 
What a dream come true. I think I need a little more brightness beneath the eye. I don't know, I need to look in the big mirror. I was kind of rushing, doing my best to talk and make up at the same time. Probably not my best makeup, but not my worst. We still have sunny skies. I told my husband, if it's sunny, we are taking a picture outside. My husband hates taking pictures, but he knows. He knew that today is one of those days that he can't really complain. He doesn't really have a choice. He's going to take a picture with me. We have to mark closing day. And I pulled out one of our wedding pictures and I plan to take it with us. And that will be the first little piece of decor in our new home will be one of our wedding photos. I did my best to fix my hair. I sprayed in a ton of dry shampoo. I threw on a cute outfit. I didn't really plan anything in advance because I've been a bit distracted. My fragrance for the day, ooh, the tassel just flew off, but I am wearing Dama Bianca. This is one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Makes me feel like a tropical queen. Yeah. This is the fragrance. I feel so pretty whenever I wear this. It's vanilla, fruity, and it's a happy fragrance. Feels like the type of fragrance you wear for a celebratory occasion, which today is definitely one of those. When I first sat down to film this morning, I was starting to get a little emotional. I thought I might cry. It's been a bit of a roller coaster the last couple of days, so it makes sense. But now that we're about to leave, I think the adrenaline is kicking in and I feel like I can see the finish line. We are so close to getting this deal done. I have so much energy. I want to just run around the entire apartment, run a couple blocks around to get the energy out. I did hear some thunder, so I think the rain is coming after all, unfortunately. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to take cute pictures, but we will eventually. It might not be today, but it might be over the weekend. I'm gonna gather my stuff. I'm going to gather myself, <laughs> more importantly. Make sure I have all of the documents that I need and we're gonna go close on a house. That completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here, for caring about my story, for watching my videos and supporting my channel. It means so much to me. I love each and every one of you and I cannot wait to share this adventure with all of you. The next time you see me, I will officially be a homeowner. So let's go close on this house. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> <laughs>